Hey. Hey. <laughs> you want to hear a secret? Well, I'm not positive, but uh, today when I was um, listening to the show, that's right, I listened to the show too. There was a part where I went, where I went, shh. Now I just moved my mouth away from my phone to do it. But when I do it sometimes at the studio, I do it right into the mic. I think it was a little annoying. So, there, I said it. Now, I might still shush, but I'll move my mouth away from the mic. There, we'll start there. <laughs> also, oy, so many things. Um, look, the way my head works, I... I, I I like to be fair. I really do like to be fair. And I don't want to be one of those people that, you know, just talks and talks and then never says, you know, hey, I made a mistake. Now, I'm not embarrassed that I that I got passionate about what I thought Adam Carolla said at all. And I'll get to the apology part in a second here. I'm also, if I'm always, the way my mind thinks, I'm always wondering if somebody's going, oh, it's not that big of a deal. So what? You know, oh. It, that's absolutely right. And not everything has to be a big deal to talk about it. So, and also, somebody might say, geez, you can't say anything anymore. I, I absolutely would never say the words, Adam shouldn't have said that. If anybody said Adam shouldn't have said it, I would say, fuck you. Adam can say whatever he wants. Um, I should say whatever I want. But, once somebody says it, yeah, then you have the right to discuss it. And that's what I was trying to do, just discuss something he said, but here's the mistake I made. I didn't even read the article. And somebody emailed me that. They asked me if I read the article, and I didn't. And I have to be honest, like, not that it's the biggest deal in the world, but I was like, that's pathetic. Even if something's not the most important thing in the world, no matter what you're discussing, you should read it yourself. And I didn't. So I did read it. And we'll discuss it on the next show. But, yeah, the, somebody emailed me, two people emailed me, or three, and once again proving that you can correct somebody but still be nice. And they were. But, yeah, I, that's, I should read the article if I'm going to discuss something. Even if it's not important, I should still read the article. So, there you go. All right? And, uh, oh, by the way, so did I get that off my head? Did I clear my mind? Okay. Um, I'm here in Toronto, Friday night, tonight, tomorrow night, Saturday. The Late Show tomorrow is the podcast. There you go. Um, Steve Fine Arts was in today's episode. We talked to him very briefly. He just came by to hang out. Steve Fine Arts, who directed and produced the Eddie Pepitone documentary, Bitter Buddha, which will be at the, the Prince Charles Theatre, August 14th in London. Go see it if you live in London. Go see it if you don't live in London. Oh, all right, I'm in I'm in Port I'm no, I'm not in Portland I'm in uh, I'm in Toronto right now and I'm tired so I'm gonna go to bed. Here's the show uh, live from Portland. We had a horn player which was awesome playing along with some music we had. By the way, if you're wondering what I'm doing when that horn music plays and plays and plays, I think I I know I got up on a chair and I was battling for about a minute. Well, the music played, so now you can imagine what I was doing. All right, there you go. Um, that's it. Uh, we'll talk. I mean, I won't talk to you later, but I'll. Yeah, I will. All right. We're still friends. Everything's good. All right, bye. Enjoy the show. It is show time, or they say podcast time, Chris. Very funny guy, Todd Glass. Hello? Hello? Hello. Is that Brian Reagan? I don't know. Is that Brian Reagan? Do you know that? Do you want me to beg? Josh, man. I'm the guy who can't come on the Todd Glass 
show. What do I fucking need to do? Uh, it's a very funny podcast, the Todd Glass Show. It can be found at Nerdist.com. Please welcome Todd Glass. From the beautiful La Cienega Strip. High atop a bicycle High shop. Black Horned Motors. <laughs> it's the Todd Glass Show. Ah, uh, fade into something nice, Chris. Ladies and gentlemen, sitting on the stage is the man that plays the music every week. His name is Chris Burden. Ah, uh, and the gentleman that is my sidekick 99% of the time, welcome Daniel Pino. Justin, come here. All right, so uh, how about a hand for uh, uh, Jason, everybody? Jason. And also, I left all my stage notes backstage. Is anyone back there? Or is anybody back there that can bring those out? Hi. Hi. Hey, it's going to be fun. Relax. I'm talking to myself. Um, I have some stage notes. Uh, can you, do you mind? Sure, sure. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Daniel Kino, everybody. Give him a nice round of applause. All right, so this is all fun and new. There we go. I, am a, I used to be a camp counselor. <laughs> My podcast is fun already. <laughs> ah, Jesus. All right, so there we go. Uh, Jason, uh, Brian Brewer is recording this show. Brian, are you all right back there? Great. Do I have reverb? Hello? 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 What? I got to be honest. It seems like we could have done that without rehearsal. <laughs> Hello? Okay, bring the reverb down a little bit more. Hello? Hello? There we go. You want to start now? I'm going to fucking... This is... N- <laughs> oh, no. And the candle went out. This is not your night. What if everything made me have a, like, a fit of like... <laughs> that's weird. People at home... <laughs> what? That means you're guilty. Um, so it's going to be fun. This is going to be fun. This is Daniel. This is uh, Chris Burden. And uh, thanks for coming out, everybody. I'm a little nervous, i got to be honest. Uh, these live shows, we've only done one in Bloomington, and you're all here. How many people are podcast listeners? <laughs> all right. Really. What? What do you mean? Not really. well, uh, what do you... Uh, that's okay. Oh, okay. What do you do? I'm a great operator. And uh, you just came here to see the show? Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> You seem great. You seem like you're the guy that can turn Todd Glass into a fit of fucking rage. And you see how the regular listeners know this is the best fucking thing about having a podcast. I swear unto George Carlin, you're loving. Everybody knows me already, right? You're like, you know, Todd don't like this guy already. It's a negative energy. Not really. <laughs> That's the Judge Judy look. It means just let us do the comedy and everything will be just fucking fine. No one sat in their car on the way here. No way you can redeem yourself right now is to go, he's right, he's right. No one sat and go, I hope there's somebody in the audience that's tremendously funny. In case Todd Glass doesn't know what to do, I hope there's some witty banter. What would happen if everybody just threw good love and good vibrations out? <laughs> so here's what's happened so far. First of all, um, <laughs> I'm a. Uh, can I get a. Uh, you're all right with a drink? You got a drink over here? Can I get a, uh, a, a Jack and Coke? Is that possible? How you can doing? I, uh, can I get a Stella? Yeah, 
Jeez, we talked for three hours about I'm not drinking. Um, no, <laughs> he's fine. Last night, what happened when we were here? First of all, Chris Burden is so funny that he doesn't even realize he says funny things, but he makes me laugh. Last night, we went to get a drink at a bar, and, and they go, sorry, it's last call, right? Yeah, at the hotel bar. Yeah, and they go, it's last call, can't get any drinks. And Chris goes, huh, it's a story. What does he say? That's he said, life. That's life. Well, like, that's life to him. You know what I mean? Yeah. I figured that's his fucking life. We didn't realize it till that point. Me and Daniel were like, that's his fucking life. That's what life. he does when we're not around. Because he must be out every night and ask for drinks after they're done. And then they go last call. So he's like, that's my fucking life. I can't ever get drinks when I want to get drinks. So here's what happened. And first of all, uh, well, let's go slow. <laughs> Uh, welcome to here to the, uh, the Helium Comedy Club. In case I don't get to say this later, and I really do genuinely mean this, this club is uh, a great club, and uh, I mean that from my heart. There's, uh, there's a lot of good clubs. I know that sounds weird, but there's not a lot of th this category. This is just an unbelievable club, and uh, they do it all right. And my brother asked me, I talked to him on the phone the other day, and he's like, why do you love this club so much? I go, he goes, what's, I go it's not one thing. It's, what's going on? Can I, can I say something? Yeah. This is such a weird thing. T to begin with, Portland has the best audiences that we've had all week. And then on top of it, it's our podcast audience. So they, the, the, the fact that there is a fucking asshole here who's heckling and being a fucking dick. Yeah, let's get that guy out of here. Yeah, get right the fuck out of here. Out. What do you think? Get him out? Yeah. Yeah. I can't have a fun show and I'm nervous. One out. They're out. They're out. And by the way, don't. It'll be fun because you know what the great thing about podcasts in the stand-up act, you got to go back to your stand-up. Here, we talk about that we fucking threw the guy out. <laughs> I don't want to do it because the podcast listeners are gentle and they're nursing. This is one guy. Get him out. Get him out. Everybody, applaud him out. Him out. Don't out. Out. That's what fucking happened. You came in and they're gonna get in their car and they're gonna be like, "What did we get thrown out?" Because they don't fucking get it. They don't get it. Oh, there we go. Thank you very much. And I don't blame everybody at that table. There's probably three people that... Well, you don't know that. No, I'm, I bet there's two people at that table that are good, loving, nurturing people that tomorrow will go, yeah, we were with fucking numb nuts. And, he, and there's like a, a, a loving audience and he kept yelling out, we got thrown out because of fuck Chuck fucking shut and fucking cuck. <laughs> Are they gone? Yeah. Oh, hi. Hi. Oh, this is good now. Oh. First of all, Daniel, I love you because I thought, I can't say anything. I'll look like a maniac. But their guy, first of all, he lifted up his hands like this. He went, ugh, and he had gross armpit hair. Which, by the way, you're not supposed to see if yeah. you're at a comedy club or at any night. Yeah, I don't want to see your armpit hair. I'm sorry, you know? It's like, it's a thing. It's, I'm like that. <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm weird like that. I'm weird like that. I don't want to be enjoying some nice pita here at the club and look at, you know, fuckity fucks armpit hair. <laughs> so anyway, is, is really Mark Wahlberg is on the phone? Anyway. Go ahead, Mark, go ahead. I uh, just want to let you know, man, I like the show a lot. You're doing a great job. Hey, let me ask you a question. <laughs> anyway, well, he's a busy guy. I mean, well, he's a busy guy, sure. All right, so let's start all over, all right? I chipped the horn player's teeth. Uh, everything's good. Everything's good over here. I like that hat. How come that guy... I'm not afraid to... Shh, listen, I'm not... I'm sorry. I'm not, I, I'm not afraid to throw out a compliment. Like, you can wear that hat. Looks good on you. I don't think it for a second. I go, That's, that guy's been wearing that hat his whole life. It looks cool. I try to wear that hat. My friends are like, Ugh. and that guy wears that hat and he's cool. That's why I'm changing my name. I talked about it last week to Foster Grant. And then I think I can wear a hat like that. Don't you think? Can, can you bring your hat up here? Let me see it. Let me see it for a second. We're going to have so much fun tonight, folks. We really are. What's your name? Manuel. Manuel. You listen to the podcast? Uh, a little bit. That's okay. It's, you know what? Take a little bit. Sounds nice. See, there's the difference of a kind right. person. Versus fucky shit, fucking fuckity fuck. He, does, he didn't listen to the podcast, but he's like a little bit. You're a good guy. Yeah. You've got a good soul. You. You're a good person. You deserve good things in life. Not this hat. Todd's keeping it. For the folks listening at home, I'm wearing a hat. I'm always aware of the You look listening. like a Russian cab driver when you wear that hat like that. Yeah, well, no, we got someone taking pictures in the back of the room. I got everything covered, Chris. Sure. <laughs> anyway, there you go. What do you think? Is that good? No. What's your name again? Manuel. Manuel, send him a dollar. 
Everybody. All right. So we're going to go nice and slow, all right? Because we got everybody in here. We're at the, the uh, we're at uh, Portland. We're at the, we're at the Portland. And, uh, I'm with, uh, with, with, I'm having a good time. We had a good week. So let me tell you how the week started. And uh, to George Carlin, I'm being honest. Um, the first night I got here, and I think the gentleman is here. Are you here that gave me the pot cookie? What is your name? Alex. Alex. I, first of all, Alex, I feel bad that you felt bad what happened. What happened was purely my fault. To George Carlin, you were just so nice. He came to the show on Thursday. Me and Daniel were on the show as it's been all week. And he came up to me with a trash bag. Uh, <laughs> I swear oh, no, no, it, when you say trash bag, people are picturing six gallons of pot cookies. No, no, <laughs> it's just a regular bag. A bag. It was yes. like it was like a thrifty, supermarket bag. A supermarket bag. Like yeah, not trash. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there were some pot cookies in it. And he goes, yeah, you know, um, I made I made you these pot cookies. I've never made them before. I think he said. He goes, but they're well. He told me he said they were pretty strong. I didn't hear that part. So, to George Carlin, I swear to you, I, I had one, and then I had, then I got, then I was like, I shouldn't eat another one because I'm, there's pot in them, and I don't want to, I'm hungry now, but I don't want to eat cookies with pot in them, so I had a half of another one, and then I, okay, let's cut the shit, I had three. I had three pot cookies, and Daniel keeps telling me, Todd, remember, those creep up on you. Be careful. And Chris is the same way. He's, Todd, you got to be careful. You're lightweight. I'm like, I'm fine. I'm fine. So then we go out after the show. This is Thursday night. We go, where do we end up going? Uh, who- Lads. Yeah, there's Christmas lights outside. Anyway, and um, all of a sudden, I turn to Daniel, and I go, Daniel, I think I might be getting too high. He, and, uh, I'm reminds so me, jealous, by the way. Uh, well... <laughs> People say they're jealous, but they're not. I've told this story before on the podcast. Uh, one time I told Doug Benson I was too high, and he goes, what's, those, what's that like? <laughs> <laughs> it's not good, Doug. <laughs> so all of a sudden, I, I just get now, for those people that don't know, about two years ago, this is an important part of the story. Hey, doing? Danny? Danny? What is it? Eddie. Robbie? Robbie. I knew it had an E at the end. <laughs> Come on, who else even remembers it had an E? Robbie. And Tony, your friend? That's right, you son of a bitch. Where's there an E in Danny? E, Danny. I don't care what it spells. It says E. Anyway, I'm 99% serious. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, what happened? So, Daniel says to me... So, goes, about midnight, you are... Is that what time it is? Yeah, about midnight, Dodd is... You know how, like, when... I didn't know there was a straw in the drink. And I went to drink it, and it poked me in the face. Now I know what the trumpet guy feels like. So, so you, you, were, you were too high, but like vocal, and you were physical, and you were doing bits, and you were running around. I was going to go up. It was an open mic night at this place. I go, I'm going to go up. It'll be great. So I go up, and I'm out of my mind. I do one job. I got, here's how nervous I get. I swear to you, I go up. I'm going to just do it. I'll be fun. I'll have a good time. The, the crowd's not really laughing. And then I go right to my act. I'm like, don't I look like Fred Flintstone and Mel Gibson had a baby? You know, I think I got to get this crowd to be on my side. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, Robbie? Jesus. So hard on me, Robbie. Jesus. And uh, I told that, and then he yells out, but I don't know it's Chris Burden. He goes, heard it. I... To George Carlin, I started sweating profusely, and I ran off the stage. Because I thought, like, that seemed like such a nurturing audience there. They were just loving and caring. I go, who the fuck heard it? So I run off the stage, and I get nervous, and I go outside and proceed to get higher and higher and higher. So finally, Daniel's like, Todd, are you okay? Because of the heart attack, he knows. And I'm like, let me show you what I look like. Yeah, first of all, you became... Non, non-responsive. He was sitting in the chair, slumped over outside. Everybody started leaving. Everyone left, and he's just sitting slumped over. Not this is what I'm. This yeah. is what I'm doing. I'm going <laughs> because I try. If you want to know what I feel like when I get too high, I get seasick. That's sort of what it's like for me. So I can get to a place in my head if I just breathe in and out. I'm going, <laughs> and then if anybody says, "Are you okay?" and I have to go, "I'm okay," I have to start all over again. So I said, "Just keep everybody away from me." Daniel goes, "Todd, you got to at least let." Talk to me. I, I got no, no, no. I lay, I lay alone for 45 minutes. And then after 45 minutes, when the bartender closed the door to the bar and left, mm-hmm. and it was just me, Chris, and you and Eric were outside, and you did not want to get up. So finally I go, Todd, all right, if you are okay, 
At least start talking to me. And I went, I'm okay. <sighs> so finally he goes, Todd, in 10 minutes, if you're not okay, we have to call. Well, first of all, I didn't want to say the words, are you... Oh, oh that's my favorite part. I knew that he didn't want to say I was having a heart attack. So he goes, I, I, brought, I swear to God, I'm pretty close. He goes, Todd, um, is there any chance that um, uh, the situation that we're having is... Um, a situation that would be uh, because that, uh, that I don't want to overreact, but is there a chance that the situation that, um, that we might be having, and I'm not saying we are, I'm not exaggerating. No. And I remember at that point, I can't articulate, but he's dancing around. Are you having a fucking heart attack? And I, and I thought, I'm not. I went like this. I went... Because I remember, I was like, I don't think, I go, I'm just, I'm just hallucinating in my head. And he goes, and then I thought, by the way, just so you don't think I'm lying to you, there was a point. I was 99% sure I was just too high. I thought I died. And I go, I want to open up my eyes to see if everyone's alive high or like really alive. So I looked at everybody and they were walking around. I'm like, no, they look like they're really alive. Like, they're not like slow motion walking around. So finally I go, he goes, wait, wait, I, I know, I know, that's how I picture it. I know where you're going to go. I picture when you're dead, everyone's like, oh, there's reverb in their voice. Todd, are you there? You're dead. I'm the trumpet player. You chipped my tooth and, and it went into my brain. So I did look around. And then at one point, I say, if you're not up, in 10 minutes, I'm, uh, calling an ambulance. I'm calling an ambulance. So I remember thinking, 10 minutes passed by, and he came over. He goes, well, I go, it was probably two minutes. Is that what you were doing? Yeah. By the way, <laughs> this I do remember very clearly. He kept, there was a cab driver, and he kept saying, we have to call a cab driver. And then the cab driver never left. They paid the cab driver 50 bucks to wait for me. So he was just parked on the curb. Keep that in mind, an important part of the story later. He pulled up onto the curb. So finally, 10 minutes passed by, two minutes. He goes, are you ready? He wanted me to leave, and I was like, just, if I wasn't freezing cold, I was like, just, I'm okay, just go without me. But they're not going to leave me in the streets of Portland all by myself. So it was him, it was Eric Olson, and so finally, you know, I just said, do it. Do it. You got to do it. I One can't. of the scariest moments of my life, he by goes, the way. He goes, I go, do it. He goes, call a cab? I go, no, call an ambulance. Because I'm not doing very well. And then they come and I hear, woo! I was like, yeah, that's for me. <laughs> and they came, and I remember looking up out of my periphery a little bit, and they were strolling on over. They're not hurrying. I'm like, I'm glad. I hope I'm yeah, not Yeah, they pulled up to the curb. They started parallel parking the fire truck. <laughs> <laughs> no, no rush. No. How long was it? Because I remember it was hard for me to look up. I heard the ambulance pull up, and I heard the, like, the, the fire engine, the air brakes, just like a tour bus. And um, how long did it take them to get from their ambulance and the fire engine to over to me? It seemed like three minutes. No, it was like a minute. It was like a minute? Yeah. And then they come over, and they go, hey, listen, uh, you know, we're just going to check your uh, blood pressure. Uh, they check my blood pressure. They go, your blood pressure's off. Your, your blood pressure's <laughs> Uh, they go, your blood pressure is all right. And then they seem to, they were going to head off. And then uh, they, they go, well, hey. I, I, the funniest I, thing, by the way, was the Ukrainian cab driver who perked up when the ambulance, he, he fell asleep. We just gave him money. We said, don't go, because it took so long to get a cab. And then he perked up, and then he saw the ambulances, and he comes up to me and goes, no, 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 no. You have to get away from these people. It costs too much. <laughs> and I only heard that the next morning. And I go, what? He goes, no, 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 they charge too much. I got to get away from them. I go, oh, my friend might be dying. I feel it's worth it. <laughs> we'll eat it. But you know what? I love that guy because I know he probably is right. He's like, no, 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 no. They, they're way too much. Like, he's probably right. That, you come you know. see my wife. She make you a nice uh, omelet. It'll be good. Yeah, you don't need the ambulance driver. That's going to fuck you. They're going to cost you too much. He probably had a situation where they, you know, they charge you a lot. So they check my vitals. And then, uh, I don't want to over-preface this, but I'm being, I really thought they meant this. So they're all ready to leave. They go, hey, listen, just to be on the safe side, do you mind if we put a few stickers on you? Stickers. I thought they meant we were here stickers so they don't get sued. 
You know what I mean? Like in case later I die and they left, they go, whoa, we were there. We checked them out. They meant like Bacardi, you know, the stickers that check your heart rate. Yeah, like, we're in a boom. band. We got some stickers yeah. we're trying to promote. <laughs> you mind? So they, they hooked me up. And you want to know the sad part here? Talk about vanity. They, they lift my shirt up. And as bad as I am, what do you think I do? Suck your gut in. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm sucking my gun in. And I'm thinking, oh my God, this is fucking pathetic. I'm having a goddamn heart attack, maybe, and I'm sucking my gut in. I'm like, oh, I suck my gut in. I lift it up, I perked up a little, you know. I was like, yeah, I'm all right, look at that, you know. Hey, what's that? It's a one pack, motherfucker. So they checked my vitals, and I was fine. And, uh, you know, then, uh, and then an they, hour later, we went home. We went home, and I got in the, oh, at the hotel. It's so much fun at the hotel. Here's what we did this week. We have three rooms connected, and we're all staying together, and it's like camp. Let me tell you something. If you don't like to camp, camp in a hotel room. It is fun. <laughs> it's the togetherness of, like, the, last night we went back after the show. Move on from the heart attack story. And uh, we, after the show here, what was last night, Friday? Yeah. Friday night, uh, we went back to the hotel room. We didn't want to really go out to a bar. And we went back to the hotel room, and we just smoked pot, and we watched, I, don't wanna, I won't say who, but really bad stand-up comedy on, the, on YouTube. I won't mention who it is. I'll tell you off the air. So uh, we, we, we just hung out in the hotel room. It's like, fine, because it's like, camping sucks because you got to shit in an outdoor toilet. And by the way... <laughs> Let me tell you something. When I went camping once, you know they have the outdoor... Uh, I think I might have told you this. Did you ever go camping with us? Me Not with you, no. no. I have been in Who's general. You, did you Hardcore camping? What does that mean? You mean like, were you... Were you... Were you, were you, were you, were you I don't know. How about you? What are you laughing at? <laughs> what are you laughing at? A uh, 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 pilgrim Bob? <laughs> well, you said hardcore camping. You said hardcore. Well, hardcore camping means you know you don't you just you sleep in tents. You make. But that's egg. not what you like to do. You like to do softcore camping. I don't like hardcore camping. I bring an RV, you know. So, so, so one year I figured I was fun. The one I love about camping the best is as a full grown adult, you usually go to sleep and there's not other people, you know, in the same room. It is so much fun if you go to sleep and there's other people sleeping everywhere. So what I do sometimes with a lot of gr- sometimes I camp. I do like to camp, but I get an RV. We put it on the site, you know. But um, sometimes uh, in the past I've done this. It was like a group of 13 of us and we get a huge suite at a hotel and we set up like tents in the room. And we all sleep there. It's great. You got a nice bed. You got toilets. But you're all together when you go to bed. It's fun. I know that seems crazy. But I know there's one person here going, I think I know what he means. And that's why I like you. Um, But it's uh, hard. It's just camping. It just means you're together when you all go to bed. And that's what we did the other night. We were all like with the rooms connected. And we we smoked pot. We watched some videos. And we were just giggling and having fun. I I, I would love to. Does this seem sad or fun? I would love to see the look on the maid's face when she opens the door and just tents all over the room. <laughs> She's like, do I make up the beds in the tent too? I don't know if they pay me for that. <laughs> and it smelled like pot in our room this morning, so I had to go out to the housekeeper's cart and get the air freshener, and I'm like spraying lemon everywhere in the room trying to, trying to make them think. They go, well, either they're smoking pot or they're snorting lemon in this room. <laughs> so anyway, there's that, and we got all that. That's good. And, uh, I have a question for the citizens the way, of Portland. Well, first of all, let me say something about your city here. If you, there's a lot of, I hope you like where you live because let me tell you something. To George Carlin, this is a good city. It's a creative city. I love the food carts. That's fucking great. You know, they, they started here, you know, and then other cities steal it. But it's like, you know, <laughs> they go, oh, it's fun like Portland, but Portland's fun. Some people, I figured something out. If you're not happy, in, I don't mean you miss where you're from, but you know, if you go, I like Portland, but I miss my family or I miss my friends or I miss my, that's okay. But let me tell you something. You know these people that go, I hate Portland. I'd like to talk to them wherever you were at before this to find out where you were happy, right? <laughs> you ever think about that? People go, I fucking hate it here. Go, I want to, give me a number where you were happy. I want to call those people, <laughs> right? Because we have those people in LA. They're like, I fucking hate LA. And I always think, oh, give me a number where you were happy. I want to call them. Boop, boop, boop. What would it sound like if I was calling those people? And, it... <laughs> and wouldn't that be great if you have someone that's always miserable? They always go, oh, I was happy there. No, we don't have anything set up, don't worry. Um, no, I don't mean don't worry. I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> the only reason I said that, I saw the look on your face and you look like, oh, I think they have something very prepared here. And I was like, oh, there's nothing prepared. 
<laughs> but, but just people that overall, you know, that aren't happy, I bet if you did some research, they weren't happy wherever they were at. You know, you call Florida. Nah, he fucking left here because he wanted to move there. Well, he's fucking complaining here too. So we're sending him back to Florida, okay? <laughs> All right, so there's that. So I have a question. If you know the answer, don't yell it out. Just raise your hand. Does anybody know how the city got its name? I do. I ha- Well, I, I told you the story probably. I want to confirm oh. it now. I guess okay, you, so we got a hand. I'm going to go to you for confirmation. Can I ask a question? You mean Portland or, or Bridgetown? Portland. Portland. No, yeah. I don't know the answer. I that. heard that it was settled by uh, the same guy who uh, settled uh, Portland, Maine. And it was going to be named either Portland or Boston, Oregon. And there was a bet involved, and it became Portland. Is that true, sir, in the back? I think that's true. Yeah, I think they drew straws for it. I heard it on the History Channel. So we might both be wrong. Can I be honest? <laughs> <laughs> I heard it was a I got confused. Chris asked me a question. I got confused. You're asking how Portland got its name. Yeah, so it was settled by the people who started Portland, Maine, and Boston. I think it was Andy Wood. He started it with the Portland Comedy Festival. <laughs> I'm the guy who knows nothing at all. I'm like so to fucking To you, dumb. time didn't exist before comedy. Well, everything to me. I thought Andy Wood did it. Yeah. The Portland Comedy Festival. Why else? What's up, Bobby baby? Anyway. <laughs> I know it's Robbie. Shut up. Robbie and Tony. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, so anyway, so did we find out an answer to your yeah, question? Yes, so I guess that is, that's true. That urban legend is true. Okay. Well, in, <laughs> I hate to do this to you. Uh, this is what's weird about doing the live shows. You still got to go. Your we have what do we call it? We're on a uh, we're on a hard, we have to hard out. a hard out. Watch your mouth. Jeannie <laughs> <laughs> uh, Moe, go ahead, Jeannie. What do you got for us today? Plenty of racy pictures for people who can see, but if you're blind, this may be the only way to cop a feel. <laughs> what? Raised images of naked bodies with braille descriptions alongside, some are calling it porn for the blind, but its creator, Canadian Lisa Murphy, has another term. I call it nudie pictures. The book is called Tactile Mind, and lots of folks might mind if we showed the raised image on the cover, but inside things are far tamer. It's a torso, right? Yep. But most of these torsos are wearing rabbit ears or elephant masks, as one critic joked. Those were clearly Abyssinian drawings taken from the palace uh, that Nebuchadnezzar built. And they're only a turn on if you're wearing a brooch. Is that right, Bruce? And yeah, that's totally Greg Bruce. Wait, pause it. That's Bruce. That is Greg Bruce, right? Why well, the fuck did he get? I'm jealous. Wait, I, I sure are going out for that. I go out for any audition. I get jealous. If I see a movie where someone's getting beaten, why didn't I read for that? Um, that was, I think that was Greg Proops. So this is about blind braille. Okay, so hold on. Go back. Let's do that again. That's so... What do you mean? Uh, what happened? Why can't you start over? I can't. Well, you have to start all over? What'd you do? Pause it up here and sit over here? I'm letting you go. Um... <laughs> Some people laugh, other people... No, Chris. come on, Chris. There's nobody else. There's nobody else. Seriously. You know what? That was a long time coming. I hope... You know what's funny? If somebody does that and he expects us to beg him back, wouldn't it be great to go, oh, I thought he was going to be mad I needed to let him go, but he looks like he understood. He oh, I feel so well. much better. Yeah. I thought he was going to be mad, but he's been so... He doesn't know what he's doing up here, and it's just so sad. So, oh, my God. I was so nervous. I thought he was going to be like, I do a good job, but it looks like he knew. I always said that about Chris. He's very self-aware. Yeah, he's very self-aware. He's very self-aware. So, all right, we don't need the music anymore. That was slowing us down. Uh, It was. I mean, as much as you liked it. uh, Oh. What's up, buddy? Can I compliment you? We're saying that we thought that when we let you go, you were going to be like, I do a good job. Right, come on, go sit down. Stop being, <laughs> stop being silly. See, Chris, if you were at the uh, board, you'd play the bailouts right now. Yes. No, we don't even have the bailout. Oh, look at you getting set up. <laughs> Speaking of Greg Proops, remember when he was on the show when you said... When Greg Proops was on the show, I don't think we played the bailout once because Greg Proops never bails out on a bit. 
that's you can helpful. throw him the biggest lump of shit, and he'll somehow come up with something so fucking funny, he'll just keep going and going. That's what we both realized at the end of the show. We're like, we never need the balance, because you give Greg Poops fucking anything, and he's like, bah, 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 but he figures it out. So good for him, you know? He's doing all right. <laughs> he's going to go places. I think he's doing all right, you know? Anyway, so we got that. Everything's good. Um, <laughs> What's else, what else is going on? What if we didn't know? I, hey, there's a, we don't we don't know. We've never we've only done this once. So if you see me get nervous, it's because I don't know what we're doing next. So let's all be gentle. I, that's why I'm so glad. Dirk looks sadder and more depressed. That would be helpful since you got in free. <laughs> Chad, 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 Chad. I look at Chad. He's like, mm, I'm from Seattle. I am sad. <laughs> look happy, okay? Uh, what's your last name? Chad Denick? Yes, sir. I like that. That's like a good name. That's like a show. <laughs> hey, like, I always think if you, you know you're going to be successful if Jay Leno saying your name sounds right. Like, hey, on this show tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Chad Denick will be here. <laughs> um, <laughs> play, the, play that music. Open up the blinds here at the Comedy Club. Look at that. Jay Leno riding a miniature pony. Shut the fuck up. Are you looking outside, everybody? Hold on. Adam? Shut that off. How you doing, Adam? Hi, I'm good. How long have you been working here at this club? <laughs> About a year. About a year? Why is this room cool right now? That's you, Todd. That's right. <laughs> Sitting to the Todd Glass Show. That's right, motherfuckers. We forgot to collect the questions from the tables. Oh, we did. Does someone want to hand those up? Yeah, can hey. you guys pass them all up to... to oh, there you go. <laughs> yes, you can, Chris. you would be appreciative if you get those questions. Folks, if, you, if you're wondering how much fun we're going to have tonight, you don't, you don't have any idea. This is going to be, like, magical. How many people, just out of curiosity... What do we have about... All right, Chris, you don't have to have a conversation with everybody. <laughs> You watch your mouth. <laughs> How many people just out of curiosity? What are, what are there about? I guess there's about 300 people here tonight. <laughs> I got to do something, and I'm a little embarrassed. I've got to... We could do Red Fox. We could do Red Fox for real. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Do you have it on there? Because I didn't tell you to put it on there. It's my fault if you don't have it, okay? No, one second. Okay, it's okay. I can get it. I know you can. I think this is it. Can I just play it? We'll see what happens. Yeah. That's okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Red Fox. <laughs> Twelve people. Go fuck yourself. I am playing for 12 people. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Red Fox. How's everybody doing? <laughs> what if he was out of his mind? Like, the bigger the crowds got, he still wanted bigger? <laughs> 7,000 people... <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Red Fox. <laughs> wow. 20,000 people, go fuck yourself! All right, Daniel, you gotta help me out. I gotta go to the bathroom. Is there anything you could talk about? <laughs> well, um, yeah, I could talk about, I guess. Um, well, did you know that um, in uh, DVD sales, 
Very few shows ever came close to topping the Golden Girls. Considering the fact that it was a show that ended before VHS tapes even became popular, the fact that it sells on DVD and outsells most modern sitcoms is astonishing. Did you guys know that Estelle Getty was addicted to cocaine for the majority of the show's run? In fact, her hair wasn't even white. She did so much coke that her hair went white. And uh, the author was... uh, Did you know... I can do this. I can fucking do this. Did you know that according to Wikipedia, Rolling Girls was started by the same people that started Portland and Maine? And they were going to draw straws, what to call the show. Boston. (laughs) Not a lot of people know that uh, originally there were seven cast members on on the Golden Girls, too. There were a lot of, uh, three of them were guys. But at the time, the public wasn't really comfortable with with the uh, co-ed. Yes, go ahead. Uh, shows being on the air, so so they, they decided to get rid of all the male characters and keep all the female characters, and thus the Golden Girls. It used to be called Golden Boys and Girls, but that title didn't test well with the uh, with the public. So they got rid of all the guys and they kept the girls. You know, they were going to do a, a remake of the Golden Girls as like an hour long show, but uh, Betty White is the only one alive, so they decided not to. <laughs> about that story and I know you, you listen to the podcast that really started from the truth I guess <laughs> the band uh, Fake Problems came over my house and uh, they, I met him out one night uh, watching an Eddie Pepitone show which by the way funniest man in the world and uh, they came back to the house I'm like I want him to think I'm cool and he wouldn't shut the fuck up about the Golden Girls I'm like this is embarrassing they're never gonna want to hang out with me again and I'm thinking, what was wrong with me? I'm still like I'm in high school. Like, I want these band members to think I'm cool. I'm a full-grown adult, and I'm going to be 32 next month. What's wrong with me? <laughs> All right, so it's good. I don't know why I chewed gum. I'm not going to be able to chew that the rest of the show. Let me swallow it. There you go. I swallowed gum. My grandfather told me uh, he swallowed gum, and he shit a bubble once. So <laughs> I was 11. It frightened me. All right, so there we go. We got everything great. Uh, We got a caller uh, on the phone. Caller in the back of the room. uh, uh, I mean, caller in the caller area. (laughs) Caller, go ahead. Hello? Yeah, go ahead, caller. Hello? Hi, are you there? Hello? 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 Folks, I'm going to tell you the truth. I've done this before, and I know you've heard me before, but now I'm just going to... I have very low tolerance. Hello? 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 I'm sorry! Did Chris Bird just sneeze? Hello? <laughs> Hello, what do, you, what do you want to know, caller? Hello? 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 Did, is that Daniel Kino? Yeah, hi, how are you? What, what color shirt is Todd wearing? Well, why don't you ask Todd? Come on, ask me! Hello? No, no. Hello. I don't know. I'm looking over there. It's a Hello. caller. <clears throat> Did Daniel Kino just clear his throat? Oh, Hello. yes. Hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, Do you have a question for us? What is your question? Hello. Yes. Hello. 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 Daniel Kino. Hey. Hey. Yes. I'm here. What's up? Who do you think's going to win the Olympics? <laughs> That's not a real question. A lot of people are winning the Olympics. That's not a good question. Hey, who's going to win the Olympics? There's- Hello? <laughs> okay, I, I don't think she has a real question. I don't think so either. <laughs> who's going to win the Olympics? It's ridiculous. Hello? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do? A little bit of that action? And they go, hello, hello. All right, what else do we got going over here? Um, Daniel. Yes. All right, I don't know what to do right now. What is that? You want to play who's got... What do we want to do here? We got audience questions. Yeah, we got some great ones. Uh, we have some uh, uh, Brian Brewers recording the show. I wanted to mention that. Justin Maurer played the trumpet. I appreciate that. Jason, hey, listen. <laughs> It's like a mad elephant. 
in the back of the room. Do that again. Uh, I wanted it loud. You the family? Can you do the Family Guy theme? Try try to do it from here. Da na 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 da na 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 like the uh, in the studio. Can you do it? I like it. Sounds like at the studio. All right. All right, so let's do this. Uh, do I? I could sit. You know what? I think later we're gonna do like a Leonard Cohen thing. Jason and uh, I Jason think that defeats the purpose. I Jason, Mauer. just call him by the wrong name. Jason Mauer. Jason Mauer. What do you want his pen for? No, I got it. I got it right. Jason. I, I, what, is it, what does that say right there? It says Jason. All right. It's not helping. <laughs> and it has nothing to do with Jason. He's a kind soul that I literally called last night at 11 o'clock. I just have a, you know, it's a thing up Todd here. Todd will st still in the middle of conversation with me will go, and wait, what's your name? Yeah. <laughs> what's your name? No, it has nothing to do with anything. Um, it's just I have a problem. Um, <laughs> I'm from a little kid. You know, when I was a little kid, you want to hear what I did? I used to, when I started having problems, I knew that I was not doing well at second grade, but I was smart enough to be scared shitless. Does that make any sense at all? Like I was not retaining anything, nothing. Everything people said to me, I'm like, I'm not retaining anything. And I would look at my teachers in fear, like, oh my God, I'm, I'm gonna be t have to be taken care of the rest of my life. And, uh, and my mom said she used to remember me driving around in kindergarten. I used to sit on a, uh, a truck and drive it around backwards for 20 minutes at a time in kindergarten. And that's when they started to get nervous. You know, you have something in common with Mitt Romney? I do. I, yeah. I don't like what I have in common with Mitt Romney. You, I, do, you, know, you know this? Yeah, he used to pull people over illegally. But yes. he, he did it like a fuck. Both Todd and Mitt Romney pretended to be cops when they were in high school. Yeah, but he... I was nice. I was a good cop, a fake good cop. I'm sure he was a prick. He was a fake bad cop. I, he, was, he was the fake You guys would have been great friends. Yeah. <laughs> we would have played good cop, bad cop. <laughs> fake good cop, bad cop. <laughs> I start crying. Is everyone having fun? Anyway, I'm so nervous there's going to be one person getting in their car. It's not what I thought. Why did they throw those people out? <laughs> can, I, can, I do my, can I do my Mitt Romney joke? Because that's going to well, be good for I think a month. It's, 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 first of all, I'm okay with you doing it because you've only done it tonight, and I know what you mean. Go ahead, tell, tell them what you told the first audience tonight. I was watching the news yesterday, and it finally hit me why Mitt Romney bugs me the wrong way. Mitt Romney has this aura about him, like the guy trying to fuck your mom. <laughs> Think about it, right? You know, you, 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 know, you know that feeling like he doesn't give a fuck about you, but he needs you to like him so he can fuck your mom. So every time he's on TV, like, that's what I hear. Hey, Buster, what grade you're in? <laughs> how you doing, Buster? I'm just like you. <laughs> uh, how you doing, whippersnapper? I want to fuck your mom. Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you, it's all right, you know? I'll tell you, I used to do drugs. I still do, but I used to, too. I don't, I think I told that story on the podcast. I don't, I don't want to, I'm, uh, did I? For the one, two. that's all right, yes, it's okay. It's, they're the real hardcore listeners. Other people are like, we don't remember. <laughs> all right, so there we go. Uh, there we go, we got, let's do this next. Everything's good, we can't get nervous because it's a live show and we're in the studio, we're very calm. We have questions over here. Okay. We have, um... I know I got a lot of people riled up with my Adam Carolla stuff. Uh, and then we got the food, the food trucks. That's cool. Fred Sanford, we did. Jason Maurer is here playing the trumpet, tuba, whatever it is. Saxophone, I don't want to get yelled at. Mm -hmm. Let's do... Uh, who's got more Twitter followers? Here. Hi, welcome to Portland. 
Sheldon, ladies and gentlemen, we're at Helium Comedy Club. Ah, uh, give me some reverb in my mic and turn my volume up. We're about to play Who? Let's start with something current. For one second. Did you write this song? I'm not even joking around. <laughs> there was an old farmer who lived in on a rock. He sat in um, the meadow. No, I didn't write You didn't write that? No. Some boys who were down by the you didn't write this song. Hold on. Hold on. Turn it off. I know you've heard me ask a lot of people about this. <laughs> but I think he's fucking play it from the beginning again. There was an old farmer who lived on a rock. No, 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 that's not me. Keep listening. His fist at some boys who were down by the creek. Their feet in the water, their hands on their marbles. It's close to a, one, to a song I wrote, but it's different. You wrote, the words are slightly, slightly different What was in the one I wrote. We're played again. There was an old farmer who lived that's similar. on a rock. You wrote it? Sat in the meadow just shaking his fist. At oh, I think that's the thing. Mine had cock in it. <laughs> so it's slightly similar. <laughs> like that would be weird. The guy stole a ruin. No, mine had cock in it. I gotta be honest. Did you, did you write this song? <laughs> I like to do visuals. Let me ask you something. You, you, you might think this, this is probably a stupid question, but is that the recording equipment back then that made people sound like that? Or did people sing like with an affectation that was like that? Nah, back then people used to talk like this. No way. My daughter who loved Nothing, sir. You're going to keep your arms folded and stare at me? He's right. He's right. What is your, does your wife listen to the podcast and you made her bring her? Is that what happened? He's going to go, like, I don't know. These podcasts aren't so hot, if you ask me. My wife brought me to the Helium Comedy Club last night. I like prepared jokes. Okay, ready? Let's go with the first no, question. Just out of curiosity, I do want to know, and you seem like a nice guy, but I want to see if my instincts are right. And I, I, to George Carlin, I won't make fun of him. He doesn't know what that means. He doesn't listen to the show. But, so, <laughs> but, but I swear to God, to George Carlin, I won't make fun of you. To George Carlin means I, <laughs> I have never broken that trust. Do, are you a listener of the show? Yes. You are? I fucking knew it. <laughs> the guy that doesn't want to admit he's wrong. I fucking knew it. The crowd's like, I don't think he did know it. <laughs> oh, you do? You, he, he, you want to know what he just said to me? Chris goes, I've got more did you write that type of songs ready. If you want. <laughs> I'm curious what you got ready today. Did you write this song? Uh, come on, you know my grandfather wrote this. That's not nice. <laughs> pussy. I get a lot of pussy. Who has more... Round one. Ready? Current events related. Who has more followers? Who has more followers? <laughs> How do I go? Or do I wait Ain't for that? Theme Don't be to ridiculous be over? with that. Ease it up. It's funny. It's funnier when it's on the show, but live it's not that funny. <laughs> That's life, man. <laughs> Made it up. All right, ready? This is a good one. Sarah Silverman. Sarah Silverman. Ellen DeGeneres. Ellen DeGeneres. Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers. Kathy Griffin. Kathy Griffin. Or Adam Carolla. More Twitter followers? Yeah. Don't you love this game? At least I do. <laughs> Sarah Silverman. Ellen DeGeneres. Joan Rivers. Kathy Griffin. Or Adam Carolla. Okay. Ellen, you all think, I think there's a lot of people. You know what, that's not fair. Robbie? Ellen's on TV, hold on, let's take Ellen out. She's on TV every day, that's, I, I fucking gave that to you, I handed that to you. Ellen's on TV Is it day. Ellen? It is Ellen, so let's take Ellen out. Okay, hey, let's not also forget to tell them they were right. Oh yeah, you were right. So, Sarah 
Silverman, Joe Rivers, Kathy Griffin, or Adam Carolla. Hi, this is Todd Glass. You're in the middle of playing Who's Got More Twitter Followers? Why are you announcing my game? I faded out. All right, let's, let's, let's get calm. I don't like when there's too much chaos because it's not good. We're almost done. Um, Sarah Silverman, Joan Rivers, Kathy Griffin, Adam Carolla. Okay, I'm going to say Adam Carolla, mm-hmm. Joan Rivers, mm-hmm. and who? Kathy Griffin? And Sarah Silverman. Oh, what was the other one you had that we... Uh, Ellen DeGeneres. That you got out of there. Yeah. She admit, she ha- yeah, I, I Usually we do three. I know, but I, I was, you know, it's, they're all female comedians and it's Adam Carolla. I thought that would be a okay. special... I'm going to say Adam Carolla. I really thought you guys were going to react to that one a little bit more. I didn't even hear what you said. Oh, what did okay. you say? I said, you know, it's the, oh, they're all female comedians and Adam Carolla. Right. Do you see where I'm... Is it so obvious that you don't even want to acknowledge what I'm doing? I'm nervous. Or is it, I'm nervous. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Adam Carolla, Sarah Silverman, Joan Rivers, Kathy Griffin. Okay. Adam Silverman, Adam Carolla. <laughs> Adam, I know. Adam Carolla. Uh, that's a good one. I'm going to have to say Sarah Silverman because okay. she's very Twitter. Chris? At Twitter, she, she, uh, she, Twitter, she Twitters, tweeters, twitters a lot. You don't need the mic. You're in. Okay, no, that's cool. yeah. okay. I got to say uh, Adam Carolla, probably. Okay. Adam Carolla? <laughs> Okay, well, this is a curious a pulse on the audience. Uh, Robbie? Joan Rivers? Joan, you really think? Oh, come on. Um, she's here. Oh, come on. Oh, it is just. Uh, that's her tag phrase. Oh, it is just. And she says that, and then, and I love it. They're, the, old, the old school comedians had tag phrases. Like, Don Rickles would go, anyway. And he would just say anything and then go, anyway. And it's brilliant. It'd be like, and a thing where there's a, there's a Jew up in the balcony going, blah, 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 blah. Anyway. And Joan Rivers says, oh, it is just. Now, I know you're like, what? That, that doesn't make sense. She would, that's her tag phrase. Oh, it is just. She would be like, Oh, I, uh, Bo Derek, I asked her how many feet were in a yard. She said it depends how many people were at the barbecue. Oh, it is just. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh, it is just. Anyway, uh, I'm going to say uh, Sarah Silverman has more Twitter followers. You say Joan Rivers. Robbie? Right, I'm sticking with it. Sticking okay. With it. Okay, Joan Rivers. How about who? What? I'm going with KG, Todd. Who's KG? Kathy Griffin. Kathy Griffin. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, Kathy Griffin, Joan Rivers. Uh, if, if, uh, I think we can get a sense of what the whole audience feels. Everybody yell out, and the one we hear prominently is who? Sarah. Sarah. Sarah everybody's got Sarah. Okay, okay, so Sarah Silverman is the winner with 3,194,441 followers. Who's next? Next is Kathy Griffin with 1,083,261 followers, followed by Joe Rivers with 12, uh, 1,197,247 followers, and Adam Carolla with 310,000 followers. <laughs> it's all right. More, how many, hey, guess what? How many Twitter followers do you think, this isn't part of the game. What's going on back there? Um, <laughs> shh, how about that listener that told me to don't shush people? That motherfucker. He loved that I... <laughs> I can't do that anymore when people, because then I think the people will start doing it just to annoy me, so I'll <laughs> give them. But I think it really bad. Hey, I can't listen to the Todd Glass show if he keeps shushing people. Anybody? Anybody out there? 10 4 good buddies? Anybody with me? Hello? Anybody with me in negativity? Anybody thinks he shushes people? There might be one person. We here. actually have a, a question related. Hold on. How many Twitter followers do you think I have? Anybody have a guess? Robbie? Just guess. I got way wrong in the last one. You know what? This Todd, is Todd. You know you, you might get your feelings hurt here really quick. <laughs> no, no. I know that's why we don't do it with comedians because when we started playing this game off the air, we used comedians, but then you realize you insult them, like because you go, I don't know. Someone's like Lisa Lambanelli. You thought if she had more Twitter followers than me. Fuck Todd Glass. I got more Twitter followers than her. Uh, uh, Robbie, how many Twitter followers do you think I have? Just guess. Seriously, t- man, pretend it's to win a million dollars. Fifty-five thousand. Oh, Sixty-one. Close. It's pretty close. No, it's a lot more. No. <laughs> what, what, if, way off. what if I was that insecure I couldn't give it to the guy? No, he's fucking dead on, basically. Yeah, that's all right. But wait till my book comes out. Um, <laughs> that's right. Simon and Schuster, motherfucker. Um, all right, let's do another one. All right, let's do another uh, one. Playboy magazine, The New Yorker, 
or Christianity Today, the biggest uh, periodical, the Christian periodical that there is in print. Playboy? Playboy, The New Yorker, Christianity Today. Playboy, The New Yorker, Christianity Today. I'm going to say Christianity Today. Chris? The New Yorker. Okay, let's, go, let's get a quick... Uh, Playboy. Playboy, New Yorker. Okay, the winner... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Can't we have a... Hey, Adam. Adam, walk by again with the, with the dog music playing. Hold on, shut that off. Walk by with the dog music. Walk by like... You. Funny. Keep doing it. Adam, keep going back. But make it funny. Walk up and down. By the way, for you people listening at home, Adam is a waiter, and he was very gracious to walk bobbing up and down. All right, so, hey, I'll tell you, it's all right, you know? I'll tell you, I like rice. It's good if you're hungry and you want 2,000 or something. Rodney doing Mitch Hedberg, okay? I'll tell you, the other day I saw a sign. It said, escalator closed. It should say escalator temporarily stairs. I'll tell you, the other day a guy asked me if I wanted a frozen banana. I said no, but I want a regular one later, so all right. <laughs> Great. Okay, so the winner is the New Yorker with 1,600,080, uh, 680, whatever, you get it, uh, 950. <laughs> Uh, second is Playboy with 500,000, uh, uh, Christianity Today has 63,000 followers. <laughs> One person, yeah. That's more than what? What were you saying? That's more than Todd. Oh, that's more than Todd? Who said that? Well, Christianity's... <laughs> Security? Security? <laughs> I know I'm not a crazy person. I went into the audience, and the minute I saw her, I'm like, she's nice. But that wasn't like that. That, that was a. I, like, I want to be. I want to be having fun with you yeah, guys. Yeah, but that wasn't like a. Dig she's at a you. good soul. You know what I mean? <laughs> Throw her out. <laughs> Do you really? All right. Uh, he has to go to the bathroom. So. Yeah, go to the bathroom, uh, and then we'll... It's okay, it's okay, go to the bathroom. That's do, you, do you want to read some of these letters? Yeah, we'll read some of those letters. You go to the bathroom, okay? Uh, or do you want to do another Twitter thing? Um, that's okay. Yeah, we'll do one more Twitter thing. Okay, here we go. L.A. Lakers, New York Knicks, Portland Trailblazers. Hold on, what's, what do you do? Something got unplugged. Unplugged in the back. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> By the way, this is the most dressed up that Chris Burden has ever been. <laughs> That's For those true. of you that listen to the show, he shows up every day to the show with uh, 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 gym shorts and button-down shirts. And I go, Chris, he goes, I wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> I go, all right. Do you ever see people at the, uh, at the supermarket or wherever you go with curlers in their hair today still? I always wonder, where the fuck are they going more important than this? Does that make sense? Like, if I, even if I go to the supermarket... I want to look all right. You know what I mean? Well, I'm not, I don't have a debutante ball later that night. I love how open-minded you are that you said people. What do you mean? It's women, for the most part, that have curlers in their hair. <laughs> but you are such an enlightened human being, you don't even see gender anymore. You never know, you know? You see a live thing walk in front of you with curlers in its hair? Uh, L.A. Lakers, New York Knicks, Portland Trailblazers. Calm down. Who do you think it is? I know the LA Lakers. LA Lakers. New York Knicks. They're basketball teams. <laughs> LA Lakers. Boston Knicks. <laughs> New York Knicks. I know, yeah. I know. I'm kidding. And Portland Trailblazers. Okay, the four, uh, three teams. Which has more? I, I, why am I even going to try to guess? I have no fucking idea. The Lakers. Lakers. Okay, I'm going to say the LA Lakers. <laughs> With uh, two and a half million, it's LA Lakers. There Here you go. Three hundred seventy thousand Portland Trailblazers. Ninety-four thousand followers. Let me show you how hard job with Chris gone. How hard his job is. I, I didn't know it would definitely work. I gotta tell you. Oh my God! Look at with him going. Oh, did you write this song? 
there was an old farmer who lived. Oh, did you write this song? <laughs> oh, here's Frank Sinatra. Sweet Caroline. Isn't that funny? Whatever Frank Sinatra did, he made it better. Like, you know, Neil Diamond did a kick-ass version of Sweet Caroline, and, and probably Frank Sinatra went, really, you think it sounds good? Listen to this, motherfucker. Sweet Caroline Good times never seem so good I've been inclined To believe they never would uh, You know, he almost recorded Born to Run. He, what did you say? Springsteen's Born to Run. Did he really? <laughs> All right. uh, but, you know, uh, it's not that hard what he does, but the reason he's there so we don't have this happen. <laughs> yeah, I know. How I gotta do this for the people listening at home. Once I get my eyes, I'm, I'm Chris Burden went to the bathroom. I'm looking at the soundboard, and this very it's, it's like porn for a high school kid. Todd's got sound is, cues. Yeah, this is like I can't. It's hard for me not to look over and want to play. Oh, that one's addicting. Hey, Daniel, you got anything you want to talk about over here? Yeah, we got. How about this? You. Thank you. Enough of that. Did you? Oh. <laughs> I was gonna do it. Uh, okay, ready? Hold on, who? <laughs> yeah, this message is for Todd Glass. Todd, it's Mark Wahlberg. I called you like six times. I don't know why I always say Wahlberg. Um, I want to do the show. Uh, you, I, you seem really busy. You never call me back. I've left like four messages. I've had Donnie leave at least six. But uh, maybe you don't answer when you see it's his phone. Um, I want to do a show. If you just call me back, maybe we can set something up. All right, I'll talk to you later, okay? Bye. Oh, he likes the show. <laughs> you should have him on. I will have him on. He seems like a really you nice You want to get guy. into some of these audience questions? Yeah, do you have any more Twitters? Uh, I have a couple. Okay, well, no, it's enough. I, I'll sense you. I won't be offended if you... Are you okay? With, is that enough? Yeah. All right. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, I love this. Wait, don't ask them. That's... All right, have you guys said enough for that one? All right, then we'll move on. Let's get some questions from the audience. Okay, here, we got some good ones. All right, what hold, on, hold on, slow down. Maybe we need... Actually, no bullshit at all, I swear to God. I'm not even joking around. Did you, by any chance, write this song? There was an old farmer who lived on a rock. I don't think you did. All right, let's go to, let's go to some questions from the audience, and we got okay. so much going on today. There's some carolers. What's going on back there? Um, there's some carolers that are going to come by later, and I'm so excited about it. I bet they're going to be great. <laughs> um... So let's start off with a, there's a couple of serious ones. So there's a couple of topics that I no, they're not getting into. Okay. Did um, any, how many people filled out all of them? I think everybody. Yeah, this was amazing, by the way. You guys get a A for audience participation. Okay. And we got pictures. And look at this. Of the most creative audience. <laughs> what happens when you die? <laughs> let's start off light. Chris left. Hold on, I got it. What happens when you die? I feel like I need something. Chris is not here. Hold on. That happens. <laughs> no, wait, what happens stop, when you die? Stop. I want to hear you answer Honestly, seriously. Honestly, what happens when you die? Yeah, okay. To, to hold on, hold on. I don't mind being serious. God knows people know that I don't mind. You've heard my special, <laughs> you've heard my special episodes with Paul F. Tompkins. <laughs> what happens when you die? What do you think happens? You don't believe, you know, in, you don't believe in, in I, any... I, I, look, look, I believe in... 
Serious answer, I don't know. I believe in energies and I believe in a lot of stuff that I don't, just because I can't. Do you can't. think the con consciousness that you're experiencing right now will um, continue to exist just, after your body expires? Well, it seems like you're baiting me. No, I'm, <laughs> uh, just because I can't grasp what happens when you die, I'm not going to make up a fake reason. I don't know. I, I don't know. You could just rot in the dirt. But uh, no, that's depressing and not funny. Hence the <laughs> silence from this audience. Um, I'm not sure. I think uh, I'm not sure, but I do believe in energies, and I think maybe your soul can go somewhere else. I'm not really sure. I don't know who who, uh, who asked that question, but I'm not sure. I know that's not funny, but you know what? I don't mind. The show can be funny. It can be not funny as long as it's interesting. <laughs> uh, so I'm not sure what happens when you die. But let me tell you something. Uh, I am sure that if there is gates. That's the weird thing about gates that people, that throws me off. I think religious people hurt themselves more than anybody else. Well, there's gates. Really? Because they just picture what's here. Like, there's gates to keep all the riffraff out. You know, like God couldn't just do it with an electrocuted fence that was invisible. Uh, God would still need a fence, though, right? Well, sure. I think if there's a God, he wouldn't need a fence. He'd to get a moat at least, right? He doesn't need yeah. a fence. So I don't, I'm not sure, but you know what? I've, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I think that I'll be okay. If there is a gate to heaven, I think I'll be okay. So what's the I, next uh, question? I once met Katie, and I think I kind of creeped her out. It was at the Bridgetown Comedy Festival, and we were drinking free booze. Could you publicly apologize to her for me, please? Brian James Oliver. Where are you, Brian James Oliver? And then he, and then he gave his number, and then under it he wrote, please don't call me. <laughs> You, you probably didn't creep Katie out. She's very sweet and very lovable, and uh, you probably didn't creep her out. You, you know, I know that feeling. I do this. I, you leave someone, you're like, oh, shit. Why do you think you creeped her out? Well, I, I, I recognized her because I was a big fan. Uh, I listened to every episode. And I showed her my dick. Oh. <laughs> what did he say? He's like, I showed her my cock. <laughs> no, hey, can, did you write this song? Where the fuck is Chris? There was an old farmer who lived All right. I don't think you creeped her out. What made you think you creeped her out? Well, I, I was talking to her, and I was just like, I'm a big fan. And, uh, yeah. I, you know, I could give a funny answer, but I can tell you, most of us, at the beginning stages of a podcast, I'm being told, this probably isn't that funny, but you come over, you're friendly, you don't creep us out. You're, you're probably fine. Is that... It's, it's, it's what I like. You're creeping me out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm funny, folks. That's what I... <laughs> He was supposed to shave his whole beard and come back clean shaven with gel in his hair, but he came back and he goes, it didn't work. I forgot to plug my razor in. But I love that you still put the gel in your hair, though, for half the bit. <laughs> hey, welcome John Doerr, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, all right, that's okay. It didn't work. Your razor ran out of energy? No, it's gone. Uh, I knew you should have used my razor. It's okay. It's okay. All right, so this is, uh, this is a bit of a serious one. Uh, if you don't like it, we can uh, cut it out. All right. It's okay. Everything's good. We're in a room with co cool people. Afterwards, we're going to go hang out at the bar. It's karaoke, maybe. On a recent podcast with Todd Barry, Artie Lang, and Greg Fitzsimmons, they mentioned the, uh, your karma rape joke. Um, in light of the Tosh controversy, would you like to defend why rape can be funny, or do you have a different point of view on the subject? Oh, uh, what, 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 what is it basically saying again? Do I have a joke about it? Well, you know, your karma. What is my joke about karma? I don't know. What, what is it? Karma rape joke? Do you have a... I don't think I have a karma rape joke. <laughs> no, seriously, don't get uncomfortable, everybody. Yeah, yeah, maybe you have a karma uh, target joke. Yeah, I go, you know, uh, what's my joke about... I go, you know, I believe in karma. Matter of fact... Uh, what is that? I forgot. Yeah, told it was at, uh, Oh, the other day. It well, that's how I do it anyway. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> no, I, I did have a joke about... I used to go, I believe in karma. Matter of fact, the other day at Target, I was stealing a lot of shit, and I thought, what did they do to deserve this? Um, <laughs> well, this one's just weird, I think. No, I, uh, hold on. So, but do I have a... I don't have a karma rape joke, do I? Yeah, I who who asked the question? I did. Maybe they erroneously cited you in on that joke. 
Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. I, it's weird because uh, I don't want to be too serious, but I don't think I've said this on the podcast before. I don't. I don't want to go off on it, but right, I don't think comedy gets a blanket statement. I think you got to hear everybody goes. What do you think about this joke? You know, I was like, I got to hear the joke. Sometimes I defend the joke. Sometimes I defend the people that are offended. So it depends what the joke is. But I've done jokes in my past where I'm like, ah, I could do better than that. So that's that's basically the way I feel. What else? Uh, do all right. We my girlfriend says she hooked up with you ten years ago in Tempe. Is that true? By the way, well, that's just rude. <laughs> tell you the truth to George Carlin this is true this got to be fake but I the only t- okay to George Carlin that is the only time to George Carlin my eyes to your mm-hmm. eyes uh, that's the only time that I got that happened and this might be true but I don't know why your girlfriend would tell you that one time I fell asleep I, I to George Carlin this is true you know my situation everybody this is the most. This is the. This is the most I've ever talked about this. By the way, one time in Tempe, I, I, I came back to the hotel and uh, I couldn't get into my room, so I fell asleep by the pool. And a girl woke me up, and I acted drunker than I was, and she, she woke me, and uh, I let her. <laughs> so I. I that's I, a, that's that's a true I, story. I'm assuming this is. You're not going to tell me, all right? That was no. I just said to George Carlin. So, I mean, but I... But I, I do I not know this? We've been friends for so long, you fell asleep and a girl blew you? You'd never mentioned this? It was, it was way before I knew you. But still, it's a pretty great story. Yeah, well, I... I'd be telling it every day to everybody I ever met for the rest of my life. Yeah, the thing is, I, I knew when it happened. By the way, when I say to George Carlin, I've never broken that trust with the audience, even when someone thought that, uh, you know, that uh, who were the people that were singing at the, uh, at the White House... The, the, the Jonas Brothers somebody right. went you said to George Carlin I'm like that was the Jonas Brothers singing sugar pie booby boop and a schmooby doopy doo I uh, could have used Echo but mm. <laughs> <laughs> but it was in Tempe at the improv and I fell asleep by the hotel pool and I remember a girl she was trying to see if I was a why do I feel like I'm burying my soul here and you're judging me I didn't do anything no, wrong no, no, no. if anything I was raped <laughs> She did it. I let her do it. I liked it. It felt good. I'm not gonna lie. That doesn't mean that's where my heart is, but it felt good. I'm not, you know, I'm not, you know, but uh, I'm not bisexual. <laughs> Me and him have a funny joke. We go like someone that says they're bisexual, but they're like think they're like I'm not gay. I'm bisexual. I like my men to like pussy, you know. <laughs> but that is true story, Tempe. I don't think that. I don't think that's true that someone's here. I think that was probably a funny question from someone here in the audience that knew. But it's just odd that in Tempe, because the reason I think that's fake, I can't imagine if the girl was here. It sounds so... I'm not, I don't like being... I, I like being silly graphic. Like if it's like, hey, you know, if it's like, hey, you know, you motherfuckers. But this is graphic, true graphic. So I don't like saying blew me too many times. But if the girl, if the girl is here that blew me, I don't know why she would be with her boyfriend going, I blew him. What type of monster blew me in Tempe? <laughs> Nothing? Anyway. <laughs> right, no, seriously, what type of heartless monster would be here with her boyfriend? I blew him! Honey, stop it! No, I sucked his dick in the pool! Heartless monster? That sounds like the most wonderful, giving person in the world. Yeah, to me, not to her boyfriend. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's Didn't that letter come in from a guy? Yes, it says my girlfriend, yes. So I think. Oh, could be a girl. Wait, what? Was say it again? It could have been a girl. Okay, my. Oh yeah, you're you're right about that. But anyway, it's a person. Yeah, it's a person. My point is that I, hopefully you're not here with someone that you're you're sitting there. I blew him at the pool in Tempe. So I'm thinking somebody wrote that as a joke, but coincidentally it's true. So. Uh, does uh, hey, if you were here, if you if it is you, I, I was I liked it. I remember liking it. I'm like fuck. That's how I know that we're all. We're all too self-conscious because I liked it. I really liked it. I'm like, fuck. I, to George Carlin, I'm being honest. I remember whatever this girl was doing, I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. I remember thinking, like, am I, maybe I'm not sure about what's going on. <laughs> because if she can do that for the rest of my life, 
I'm gonna have a nice life. So anyway, that was at the Tempe Improv, and that was like probably 13 years ago. So anyway, but if, you know, anyway, if, you, if it is you, you're nice. Does, all right, next one. Does Todd's mom's Kia have a custom license plate that reads free pussy? <laughs> yes. My mom did get her Kia, by the way. I think I talked about it in the last podcast. So thank you, everybody. Yeah, that was... And by the way, when you retweet that stuff for me, that means the world to me. It's we retweet it? Yeah, yeah. when you tweet Kia. Or tweet You somebody. made that happen. I'm George Carlin, I'm being honest. Like, so many people retweeted Kia. They called me, and then they hooked my mom up with a Kia. Not free, but pretty close. And uh, so thank you very much. I appreciate when you do that. I don't take that for granted, so uh, go ahead. This and is your, she doesn't have a free pussy banner. And yes, my mom gets the joke. She has a, my mom is, has a great sense of humor. Even though some people think as you get older, you don't have a great sense of humor, but you do, you know? And by the way, speaking of older, I always think it's hard. People are, I don't know why, I, I will get to this in a second here. But I always think it's weird that I think people are harder on women when they're getting tattoos in my head. You know, people say, like, what are you going to look like when you get 70 with that tattoo? That tattoo. When you're 70, how are you going to look with that tattoo? Uh, when I was 13, I saw my grandmother naked when she was 70, and she didn't fucking look good even without a tattoo. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, tattoo. Uh, well, we should have done this. I'm going to get it. I want to get an arm We're, sleeve. Todd is looking for a tattoo artist to, I think, to, sli- to put a sleeve on. Okay. I think Preston and Steve and Philly are hooking me up with oh, this, okay. so I'm good. This too. is your second live podcast. I love the first one, and assume I'm having, uh, I'm enjoying this one. Hope you are. How are you liking the live taping so far? Uh, I was... That's like the nicest question. I know. Who wrote that? Did you write that bef- I did that. before it started even? Yeah. Because how did you know that I... Well, first of all, I was a little nervous up front. That, the people that we kicked out scared the living shit out of me. Because when you do these live podcasts, it's usually with an audience that knows you pretty well. And I thought, there's no fucking way that, you know... So once they kick them out, and I don't like kicking anybody out, I really don't, but once they kick them out and you people are supportive, um, I'm, I feel good right now, there, if you must know. So there you go. What is the meaning of life? Uh, that's a, the meaning of life. What does that mean even, what is the meaning of life? Like what is, I don't even know if I had it, and I like to talk, but I don't know if I have an answer for that. <laughs> the meaning of life. Just be nice. Be like your dog. That's how easy it is. That's why, you know, I, people go, are you religious? Are you not religious? I'm simple. I just like things simple. If you want to teach your children how to be, and you go, you don't, they go, you go, well, I'd like to teach them to read the Bible, but I don't know if they will. Just say, see what dogs do? Do that. And they go, mommy, what is that? They're nice to people if they're nice to them. It's that fucking simple. There you go. Uh, see, oh, this is a great question. How Let's can I get... Two, two more questions. How can I get uh, Todd Glass to perform at my wedding? Uh, you should get a podcast and get your fans to tweet at Todd Glass. <laughs> Where are you getting married? Who's, who, who asked that question? Uh, that was me. It was actually, it was, I was asking about the cat. Todd Glass show cat. Meow. Uh, oh. Hey, R- <laughs> Rory would uh, perform at your wedding. It's $500. <laughs> yeah, it's actually not that much. It's not that much. He'll pay for his own air and hotel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got two more questions and then we got to go in for the close here. You the fucked that shit? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you don't have any great music ready after that? No, no, get, get the... Uh, what's good music after you fuck that shit? Yeah, get Havana Gila. Do it again. Who, who said... Let the guy from the... Who said that? Actually, who who asked that question in the audience? Okay, when we say, does anybody in the audience have questions, we'll say it. We're, we're going to leave this all in. We're not going to edit it out, but it's great if this plays afterwards. You ready, uh, Chris? That's all right. You're okay. You got a lot of gel in your hair. <laughs> a lot of ladies are going to... I bet there's a lot of ladies here tonight that are single that are going to want to have some fun with you. You give him three Vicodin, he doesn't remember a thing. That's what Daniel told me. <laughs> okay, question from... Are you ready? Question from the audience. Hey, Todd. You fucked that shit... Pause it out. All right, pause it out. Uh, okay, this is actually a good question. Is there anything ever actually cut from the show? 
That is a really good question. In the beginning days, yes, and it was usually we would make fun of a comedian that I don't want to see out and, feel, you know, he thinks, like, you know, I don't like him. Because there's a lot of comedians, I'm not crazy about what they do in their act, but I really like them as a person. And uh, when I see them at a comedy festival, I was like, fuck, I shouldn't have said anything. So in the early days, I would edit out a lot of stuff when it was a comedian. Now, uh, 99% of the stuff I don't cut out. Well, except the... What? <laughs> Except when I uh, mentioned... And I love also the same I person answered. wrote, the same person wrote, uh, also, what advice would you have for someone starting out in comedy? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Don't they want to know? Uh, I was so I'll ready. I'll tell you. Okay, go ahead. Two more. Um, what was the name did you originally have to bleep that led to Marty Flipman? No. <laughs> I'll tell you at the bar after the show. It's not, it's not anything bad. Just you know what it's like. There's comedians that they're acts. It's like, fuck. So, it's, not, it's not that I think I'm the best comedian in the world at all, because I'm not. I attempt to try to be good, and there's just so bad. But I don't, I don't want to mention it. If any. you could have anyone, el anyone else's life, whose life would you want? Mm, Robbie. <laughs> no. Um, no, I don't think that's a serious... That, uh, anybody's life at all? I'm happy with my own life. I'm, I'm pretty good. You're good content? I mean... It, uh, yeah, because, uh, you know, I, think, I forget who said this, but they go, when I think of people's career, I would like, I would think of people. But then I think of their, who they are as a person. Sometimes I'm like, eh, I don't want that. So uh, I'm all right. I'm all right with, uh, I'm all right with where, where I'm at as myself. But uh, career, whose career would I want? Um, Brian Regan. <laughs> oh, wait. But him as a person, too, I like, too. But I still take my own life. I'll still take my own life. But uh, Brian Regan's career. I like Brian Regan's career because people come out to see him perform. It's only because they love his stand-up. And, and Jim Gaffigan is the same way. When you have other guys that, that have had movie careers, they come out because they like their stand-up, and then they get all the people that come out to see them because they're in the movie and they're not that hard. Remember when... Does this make any sense at all? Yeah. Yeah. So those guys, whoever comes out to see Brian Regan or Jim Gaffigan, it's only because they know them from their stand-up. But if you go out to see Zach Galvanakis, he's got his hardcore fans that love him for his stand-up with their brilliant fans. And then you got the fucking fuckity fucks that uh, saw him in the movie. And, you know, that's the dilemma. But uh, because I'm a huge Zach, Zach fan, actually. So there we go. Are we going in for the clothes? Yeah, I think so. I th yeah. I think we've been... Uh... Oh, someone send us a jingle in. What's his name? Joe. Joe. He gave us a jingle for our pre... Go play this. Joe? Pause it. He goes, there's a kind of... I open the show. What do I do? I go, hey. And that's what he says in the thing. There's a kind of, hey. <laughs> took us 18 times listening to it to figure it out. But his name is Joe, and he sent this to us. Go ahead. That's okay. There's a kind of hay at the top of the show. Tonight the intro's intro. A personal greeting from your host. You know what I mean, just the two of us And Daniel Kino With facts about the Golden Girls We'll take a break, we'll be right back So listen very carefully Closer now and you will see this is fun out when it's done The only sound that you will hear is when Todd speaking oh so clear on the phone Hello? Hello? Sandra Van Garden Hello? 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 <laughs> Alright, how about it? What's his name, Jim? Joe from Portland. All right, there you go. Fade that out. Thank you, Joe from Portland. That was so nice. That guy came up to me last night after the show, and he handed me the CD, and he was like, I made this for you. Now, look, I know this is a visual. Wait, hold on. I, can I ask? Yeah, yeah, bring the question. I, I, I've been... This we're, is we're such a great opportunity. I, lo I love having the opportunity to do this. So, how many of you, you all listen to the podcast, right? Every person downloads it, yeah. 
How many of you follow me on Twitter? <laughs> well, what the fuck? Now, why, why, why isn't everybody following me on Twitter? Like, seriously, like, I'm asking, like, why, how, how packed is your Twitter account that you can't follow me on Twitter? You listen to the show, obviously you enjoy it. I say shit that makes you laugh once in a while. You just won't follow me on fucking Twitter? Please follow him on Twitter. <laughs> He gets so upset. He I just don't understand. Like, you listen to the show. Like, By the way, he's calming. He's calmer than when he brings this up to me personally. <laughs> well, like, what, what's your name? Robert. Robert, you don't follow me on Twitter. I Why not? I'm not on Twitter. All right. Oh, that makes okay. sense. Okay. How about how about your friend? How about you? Okay, Joey. Robbie. Robbie, are you on Twitter? I do. I am. Are you? Do you, do you follow me? Yeah. You do. Well, then you're not the. You're like, why, why aren't you following me? No, no, hold on, hold on, Robbie. You could, by the way, you could say a reason that I would go, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. I just kind of quit checking it because I follow too many people that it's always way Well, if you already follow too many people, might as well throw me the fuck in there. I thought you were so selective. You didn't want to be bothered. Oh, I have too many people. I don't even check it, so I don't want to help you out. I get no Twitter. This is bullshit. He's bearing his soul here, folks. Please follow him on Twitter. So this is a visual. A lot of times we say we're going to put videos up online. And one person wrote me, where do you put these videos? And I, I don't want anyone. So we put them on YouTube, right? Yeah. It's just uh, YouTube.com slash user slash the Todd Glass Show. Okay. So we're going to put this video up on. Put the, roll the video of... Dancing Men. This is a video that's online. I don't know the original song that these guys are dancing to, but I swear this is a video that's on YouTube. But we switched around the video. We thought we could make them dance to anything. Do you follow what I'm saying? They're fucking dancing. We could play anything. And My gal has got two eyes of blue and turn the stage lights out. She always makes me smile when I am feeling down. Whenever I am with her, I just grin like a clown. Because my gal's pussy is the smallest in town. Okay, change the song. We have other songs. Go ahead, play it, put another song. It's raining men. Hallelujah, it's raining men. I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna let myself get. Daniel said, play Haba Nagila. Haba Nagila, Haba Nagila, Haba. Play Juggalog. We'll put this up online, I swear, for the listeners. Crank it up. Crank it up. Juggalog, Juggalog. Play, play one more. Play Benny Hill. Go ahead. Play Benny Hill. All right. Fade it out. All right. Look, we'll have, we might have to edit this, but I'm going to bring the stage lights back up. We're, we're going for the close. I don't want to go too over here. Oh, my God. Look at all the carolers that stop by uh-huh. here at the Helium in Portland. Oh my god, hey folks, give these cowers a nice round of applause.
here. We're going to see if anybody can guess who it is, and then we're going to wrap things up. You've been a fun crowd. Uh, can you come up here, surprise guest? What happened to your wig? No, it's back there. Oh, we had this... <laughs> You know what I love about Eric is though he wasn't prepared to do the bit, he still walked up here. Like he wasn't dressed the way he was supposed to, but he's like, oh, fuck it, I'll wing it. Yeah. I'll wing it. I'll wing it. Uh, all right. All right. That's Eric. He's new to the show. That's Eric Olson, ladies and gentlemen. Eric, 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 Eric. Eric. All right, let me, uh, let me go in for the close here. Uh, first of all, no, no, he'd, well, he, they know who it is now. It's okay. Uh, yeah. It's okay, Irk. 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 Uh, uh, we're going to go in for the close right now. We are running a little over, uh, but that's okay. Uh, thank you, everyone that works here at Helium, the wait staff. They are the sweetest, nicest people in the world. When it comes time to tip them, if you could be generous, I would appreciate it. The bar, as we leave, is the bar open? Uh, um, uh, uh, Robin? Yes. The bar's open? Yes. Do they have the candles lit out there the way I like it? <laughs> Let's dim the lights out there. These people will stay, but these are podcast <laughs> listeners. If it's bright out there, they fucking haul ass out of here. <laughs> so let's have some nice music and let's, you know, let's have it right, you know? So uh, Mary Ray, thank you. And uh, obviously Robin, thank you. And everybody from there, you know, whether it's door staff, you guys are great. I, I don't want to, this is not a rehearsed speech that I make at every club. Uh, this is a great club and... Every single thing you do here does not go unnoticed for making it a pleasurable week for the three of us oh, here. I'm sorry, I stepped on your pants. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. You want to play something real quick? What is it? The audience. We made that for you. So thank you, Jason uh, Maurer, and also, hey, Brian Brewer, where are you? Thank you for recording the show tonight. A guy that listens to the podcast came in, hooked everything up, got everything hooked up. Brian Brewer, you're a good man, and I appreciate it. Also, um, uh, I think that's it. Uh, oh, I don't think he showed up. There was a 17-year-old listener that I got on the guest list tonight. What was his name? I'm here. I'm here. You're here? Yeah. What's your name? Yeah. What? Charlie, shut the fuck up. You made it. Uh, Charlie Kraft, god damn it. All right, we didn't know if you made it. We, now, did you get the email we sent you today? Yeah. And you didn't send us back one? Oh, he did. Why don't you tell me? I forgot. <laughs> you know what they say about I forgot? There's no I in forgot. I'm like a dumb guy trying to be motivating. All right, so Charlie Kraft, we're glad you're here. He wants to be a... You do, have you done stand-up yet, Charlie? No. But you're going to. Well, uh, I think Charlie? I think I <laughs> all right, all right. You're all right. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you made it. And, uh, and, 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 and uh, uh, Robbie, good to have you here. Sammy? Robbie, what are you going to do tonight when you get home? Next five minutes. I met your mom last night. Do you live with your parents? No. Your mom came to the show last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be honest. And I'm not trying to be... No, I don't know. She just... Doesn't Does she want to hook up with me? <laughs> Can I tell a story really quick? You swear to God? Yeah, we went and saw you in San Francisco, and you said, oh, your mom is pretty. Is she single? Blah, blah, blah. That was before. <laughs> I, I figured love that you had to do that with complete strangers. Well, just I figured it was the word got around. No, no, Todd Glass straight. He hit on my mom. I, I figured it was safe to hit on his mom. I figured she had a dad, and I'd be like, "Hey, your mom's real hot." Like, wait, so we listened to the Mark Maron show in her car together. Uh huh. And she's like, "What the fuck?" Is that? <laughs> Well, you, your mom is very nice, and you tell her that I, you know, hey, if she wants to hang out by Tempe by the pool, <laughs> I'll, I'll do whatever I can. Um, all right, I guess we're all good. Hey, you guys, I don't want to. Thank be, you so much. Yeah, it's yeah. been so much fun. Uh, is, you guys is, are amazing. Is, is Jason still here? Yeah. 
Why don't we play out? Like, come on back up. Why don't we put that do one? Do you want a taxi again? As people are leaving, yeah, we'll do, we'll we'll uh, we will do a little uh, as everyone's leaving. And, and thank you very much. I really. If anybody's having a party tonight? Uh, let me know. Yeah. Hey, we will, will go by. back to your house. I, I we really will. So why don't we uh, put the? Why don't you just come over here? There you go. Thank you very much. Is there anything? Your website you need to plug or anything? Don't, don't hit me again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so hold on, hold on. Sit down, Chris. You know me. When, when I say I'm going in for clothes, that means there could be another hour. Um, no, I just want to make sure I thank everyone else. Hello? 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 Okay. So we thank the audience. Thank Mary Ray. Thank uh, 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 Robin. Everybody that works here. Be nice to the wait staff. Hey, seriously, I've said this before. This is our second time. Yeah, I get a little bit nervous. You couldn't have been nicer. You couldn't have been warmer. We, the bar is open. Uh, we'll be hanging out there. If you want to hang out with us, it's awesome. And, uh, and that's it. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. in the back, the volume. Good night, everybody. show left so stay right here hi this is Todd Glass excuse me sir do you know there's a new episode of the Todd Glass show every week no not every show every week every single week every single week so there's a new different show you're putting sir you're putting out the same podcast no sir you're not listening there's a new podcast every single week and go to Toddglass.com a new one every week really yes that's shocking Wow. Uh, now there's a promo. Shove that up your ass. Anytime you're getting low, instead of letting go, sit and let the time pass. Hey, here comes another time, bless you. Hey, here comes another.